In this video, we're going to show you how to reverse engineer your competition in less than 10 minutes. And this is a component video that goes along with the blog post, which will explain uh, more in further detail of the reasoning and the areas of opportunity behind this. But you want to use this workflow to not only look at your competition, but it's great for market research for your own customers, for finding your customers' competition, for finding areas of opportunity in uh, content marketing. Um, and the disclaimer here is number one, None of this is sort of that illegal, uh, you know, hacker kind of uh, approach. It's all freely available data across the web. Um, some of these services that I show you are free and premium, um, and they go ahead and gather some of this data for us. Some of it's just some manual searching, and it's just really stringing along these different uh, these different uh, apps and, and websites and putting them together in some kind of cohesive organization. And the second part of the disclaimer is. Today's guinea pig is themeofthecrop.com, a competitor to my company site, slocumthemes.com. And I've already cleared this with Nate. He's a good guy. He's allowing us to do that. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First thing that I would recommend if you're going to jump into this process is create what I call a competitor board. You can call it whatever you'd like. Um, and set up the categories uh, accordingly. And, and again, the blog post uh, emphasizes more about this, about this strategy and the reasoning behind it. And then I'm actually doing a whole series of podcast coming up about web design, website relaunches, and a lot of this has uh, comes into play. So it's definitely a great primer. First category that I would define is a direct competitor, somebody who's doing, you know, 90% of what you're doing. They are the direct competition, right? They are, in my case, selling premium themes for WordPress. Uh, I would list a direct competitor here or somebody that I feel is a direct competitor. And maybe you find that they're not a direct competitor as, as we move along this process. Um, there are category competitors, somebody who's doing generally the same thing, but with different messaging and different branding or um, slightly different. So in the case of our friend Nate at Theme of the Crop, he's creating WordPress themes for restaurants. And uh, sure, there's the argument of general purpose WordPress themes can be used for any kind of business uh, contact, context. Uh, Nate is really driving home uh, the, the, the usability of of the restaurant industry with his themes. Plus he has technology that goes behind it. He has plugins that he's developing specifically for the restaurant industry. So I consider Nate a category competitor uh, where somebody could probably look at both of our themes and make a choice, but maybe lean towards him, especially if they're a restaurant owner. And that's where I place Nate in this lineup. Then there's the indirect competitors. And uh, in this example, I talk about uh, Andrew Norcross's Design Palette Pro, and I label that as an indirect competitor. It's it's just somebody who is also in the larger marketplace that competes for my customer's attention. I still think it's very important to pay attention to your indirect competitors, especially in the WordPress space, uh, be because people have to interpret these digital products, right? So a lot of customers are general WordPress users, and they don't know, like, they might not understand that Nate's themes are better for restaurants because he has a restaurant plugin, and they might buy a, a theme from me um, instead. Uh, they, they, you know, it's it's an indirect competitor in that sense, right? Same thing with Design Palette Pro. They might have a theme and say, oh, well, I can design a, re a WordPress real, uh, restaurant website with Design Palette Pro, and I'd be just as fine. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they should have bought a restaurant theme specifically from Nate. So that's an indirect competitor, somebody who's sort of competing for the noise and could possibly be an alternative to your product. Uh, I like to throw in this fourth <laughs> category called the Apple category. These are the people that uh, you are not going to be able to compete against right away, um, or, or at least for a long-standing time, because of the market share, right? So ThemeForce and StudioPress, in this example, if I were, compete, if I were uh, building a competitor board for my Slocum Themes business, uh, I would say that these are the folks that, look, I'd love to be the Apple uh, of the world, but that's going to be a huge stretch goal, right? That's going to take a lot to get there, uh, much like ThemeForce and StudioPress. It's going to be difficult to kind of achieve that right out of the gate, right? So... First thing I do is I, I like to throw these, uh, this, I'm using Trello for this, um, and I like to just categorize this, right? And the idea here is you have this competitor board to share amongst your company, your team, you know, whoever it might be helping you with marketing or strategy or content. And the idea is it's almost like scrapbooking your competition. And as you go over time, you can sort of go back and see if your, if your competitors are changing over the course of six months, a year, uh, you know, weeks, you know, what is it? How, you know, keeping tabs on your competitor and just growing a nice little database um, for that. The flip side, you can also use it for marketing. So if your marketing and content team needs to find ideas, 
this this competitor board would be a great place for them to dip into and see what the competition's doing, right? So here's how I would run through this in less than 10 minutes, right? So I'm going to go to theme of the crop. I'm, I've identified him as a category. And what I'm going to do is just going to take his first call to action. I'm going to dump that right into my Trello card. And this is all I'm doing is clip uh, clipping things in here, right? So themes and plugins for restaurants, making WordPress work for restaurants and cafes. That way I know what his major call to action was, right? So as I do this for, you know, six to, to a dozen different competitors, I'll know like what's their strong call to action? Like what is it that they're promoting? Because I'll know uh, for further uh, you know, for further analysis. So I'll generally take a look around on their website, take a look at their products, see how they've laid it out and understand where they're, uh, where they are on social, uh, how easy is it, is it for them, uh, for a customer to buy from them, right? So I can go and view themes right away. I can go and view his plugins. I can quickly get to support. I can find a shopping cart. So I do the general sort of just run through of the site, understand, uh, what I'm looking at. Next thing I'll do is I'll go in, just make sure I've identified, um, his biggest social media uh, uh, link, and that, that's his Twitter link, which I found uh, at the bottom uh, of his site. So I'll just keep that there for now. And the idea is to just gather those, those links, right? So theme of the crop, his Twitter account, his Google+, Plus. these are just ways for me to get back and quickly do research on, on their social and just keep tabs on that, right? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the old Google, right? So theme of the crop. I'm going to see, I'm just going to go through these first few pages here. And okay, there's his, his website, um, which I already know about. There's his Twitter handle. I can quickly get links to his, his plugin. Um, so I might go ahead and uh, open that up and grab that link. So that way I can keep tabs on what is going on in his plugin world. So I'll save that there. Let's go back. I'm just going to generally go through and figure out, okay, I can see he's being linked uh, on this, uh, this WordPress directory site. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that as well, because as you'll see later, it's a great, uh, he's driving a lot of traffic from that. So I'm going to go ahead and find these links. And what you're doing here is you're finding areas of opportunity. So if I go to this link, let's say, I'm going to read um, about his theme review. So I, or I'm going to read about the, the theme that he built, uh, and designed and uh, read this review that they put together. So I can identify, um, what it is that this comp, this website liked about his theme and sort of give myself, um, some ideas to maybe compete, uh, at this level. Um, or if I were to leave a comment in here about his business and say, Hey, this is a great theme. Um, and that's just giving some link juice back to, uh, potentially back to my site. All right, so let's move on from that. So you've done the, the typical Google search. You kind of know, you know, where his links are and you're, you're gathering this stuff and putting them in your competitor board. Next thing you want to do is do a site search. So for those of you who don't know, this is all pretty basic stuff, but site colon and then the website name. So theme of the crop.com going to hit enter. This is going to tell me how Google has indexed his website, right? And he's got about 175 results in Google. So I know uh, it gives me an idea of, okay, what, how many pages is this, does this company have in there? Has Google indexed them? I can kind of see the keywords in his header, uh, in, his, in his page titles. Um, and I can just kind of go through and see what's being indexed. Uh, it's a great way to kind of see um, a site map of his, page, of his website you know, without going to his website. And I can kind of see the meta descriptions. I can quickly find things. Um, that I might not be able to like blog posts or quickly get to his downloads and I can find other areas of his website that is, you know, super useful for me to kind of reverse, uh, engineer. Um, I don't see anything right off the bat here that would be out of the ordinary. Everything looks like blog posts and, um, product pages. But if you found a competitor that had something in there that you wanted to definitely go back on like a blog post, definitely pull it out from this list. Right, so those are the first two. I'm going to Google them and I'm going to do a site search and I'm going to see how Google indexes them. So I'll know, boy, do I need more pages than him uh, to rank better in Google? Do I need um, better keywords? That kind of thing. Next step, I already ran this just uh, for the sake of time so we don't have to wait for it to complete. Um, I'm going to do a web page test, right? And I am going to, that's at webpagetest.org. And there's many tools for uh, judging speed uh, and he's doing 
you know, a, a kick-ass job here. It's going to be very tough to compete with him uh, at, on page speed and sort of beating him out. But it's going to be a great indicator for me to say, hey, I might need to improve my page speed, which I already know I do. Um, and seeing this sort of just, um, you know, reinforces that that issue, right? So it's a great way to kind of look at your competitor and see things like, you know, what are they loading on their site? What scripts are they using? What, you know, JavaScripts are they using? Um, you know, are they loading fast or slow? Are they optimizing? That's going to be a huge thing because speed is key uh, on, especially on Google. So what I would do, or search engine. So especially what I would do here is I'm going to go ahead and add an attachment and I already have the screenshot made. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there. And again, I'm just using this as um, as my clipboard for my competitor. I can always come back in six months and see if he's scoring just the same uh, or better, right? Um, and it'll be a great way for me to see uh, my competitors over across the board if how, how well they're doing uh, on page speed, right? One of my favorite tools, I'm going to move on to the next step, is similar web and similar web is uh, some kind of it's an aggregating tool of data right so basically it's going to collect a lot of the data that we're talking about today uh, that's freely available on the web and sort of put it all together right and there's a premium version of this so the the free version only shows us a snapshot but it's still just as useful so when i when i put up uh, theme of the crop compared to slocumthemes.com, we can see the numbers sort of head to head, right? And, uh, you know, for la for what it's worth, I uh, don't know how accurate these are, but still it's a great um, sort of thumb in the thumb in the wind and kind of feel the direction of where the site's going. So I can see on a global basis how we stack up uh, theme of the crop in blue, slocum themes in gold, um, and we can see uh, based on the United States, right? Uh, it does an estimated average, um, of uh, estimated visits uh, and I believe that is for the past uh, month or yes that's about for the past month of estimated visits time on site page views again I don't know how accurate this stuff is but um, we can still use it as a good gauge uh, well, so basically in this example also what I can see is he's crushing me in the referral links right so what I would do is say how do I get as many referral links uh, as Nate does. I see him doing fairly well uh, in SEO uh, and, and organic search. Uh, so I know that, you know, we're strong with a lot of blog posts and a lot of videos and, and podcasts and things like that. But I really want to compete with him. And, you know, we're sort of head to head on, on direct links to, to theme sites. I don't think many people are jumping in and putting us direct uh, for theme sites. Not like we're a news site where people are, you know, showing up every day to check on things. Uh, but I definitely see area of opportunity and the referrals. Uh, and then leading countries, you can kind of see where his leading country stuff, but that's the sort of boring stuff. The better stuff is where I'm seeing these top referring sites come from. So I see that as number one referring site is .org, WordPress.org, and it is also for us because that's where all of our themes are. But then I go and I can see things like, oh, these reviews that he's getting on A themes and uh, whatever this one is, Evo WP themes, never heard of this one. <laughs> you know, I'm just looking at and WP Lyft certain her, certainly heard of that. WP Mayor have heard of that. Um, he's getting a lot of referral traffic. And for me, it would be my job to say, okay, how do I go and get these same either reviews or links back over there? So uh, well done on that front. And the same thing I would do is I would just snapshot this and throw that into my collection and say, I'll come back on this in, you know, two or three months or whatever, and just see how we, how we stack up. Right. Um, another website that I, that I like to use is ahrefs.com, right? So you would just come in here, type in the, the URL you want to sort of look at and hit search links. What this is going to do is going to go and look at the amount of backlinks, the URL ranking, um, and the referring and how many referring domains uh, are indexed. I am uh, less concerned about sort of the technicals of all this stuff. Again, I'm just looking, okay, can I compete with this person? The whole practice of this is to do this sort of quickly and efficiently and say, all right, I think I can compete against that. Um, it's also a great way to kind of see, um, you know, which referring domains. I don't know if you can actually see this in the free version. You can. You can see some of them, um, but not all of them. You'd have to go up to premium to that, but you can kind of see where where the top um, domains are coming in from. And then more importantly, I can come and I can see, you know, how, what, what does anchor text looks like? How are these, how is he getting links back to his site? Uh, I can see 6% of them, according to this data, is actually his own personal name. Um, so I'd never be able to compete against that. Um, I'd never be able to compete against his brand names either, right? But I would probably look through here and say, you know, MailChimp for restaurant reservations. Is there something I can compete against on in those keywords? If so, let's go after it. If not, you know, no big deal. We move on to the next thing, 
right? So again, I'm not really diving into these these things uh, in too much detail, um, and I'll summarize why uh, in a minute. But this is another great tool that you can use to kind of look at all those links. Uh, last on my list is BuzzSumo, and what I do is I just drop in their URL here. The other uh, Ahrefs kind of shows this as well, but this is just a little bit quicker for me. BuzzSumo will uh, output the most popular shared content, right? At least that that's in their database. So I can come in and I can see what his top shared content is. Again, limited and free, but there is a paid version. Um, and I can see things like, okay, he announced the spot, new restaurant, WordPress theme. So this is a new theme that he launched. And of course, he got a lot of buzz behind that. Um, but this one is more important, using WordPress to take restaurant, restaurant orders online. That tells me like, okay, so he's got a piece of content that got shared uh, a lot. If I were competing in the restaurant WordPress space, um, I might look at this article and try to uh, outdo him with this article, or at least my marketing team knows that, hey, we should probably talk about um, taking orders online with WordPress and what's that, what that's like. And that'd be a great indicator um, of uh, the type of content, content that we should make. And again, if I wasn't doing this sort of live, I'd be kind of gathering all of this stuff, putting it in here, and it's really just for that research. I go through, I'll do six to a dozen of these, and um, that will be sort of my little database, and I can always go back and check on that. At the, bot at the end of the day, but the bottom line is you have to have a great product. You have to have great customer service. You have to get your pricing right. You have to get your messaging right. Um, this practice isn't just to say, well, I can just outshine uh, Nate in areas of content, and I can make my site load two seconds faster, that kind of thing. It's not about that. Um, it's about looking at them and understanding, you know, their competency in the market. Are there areas that you can go after? But at the end of the day, great product, great customer service, right messaging, good pricing, all that fun stuff uh, still comes into play. Um, so yeah, that's my 10 minute review on uh, reverse engineering the competition. If you want to learn more, uh, you're going to be linked up to the blog post in this video. If not, mattreport.com, mattreport.com slash subscribe. Thanks everybody.